Hyatt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Good morning, everyone. I got six here almost on this machine, so I'm assuming it's pretty close on someone at 6 a.m. And welcome to early morning prayer. My name is Michael Pyatt, and I'm a volunteer pastor here at Central. And it's my privilege today to have the opportunity to lead on our day 16 of this 21 days. So, um, just a little caveat for those especially that have been tracking with this every day. You may be noticing there's a lot of prayers each day. And that's because intentionally this book was laid out with prayers throughout the Bible. So the ones from the Old Testament, New Testament, and each day we're switching to different prayers. So they were pre-selected and then we worked on devotions based on those choices. And today's will be on um, Jesus prays for his future believers. So there's a few preliminaries. I just want to welcome everyone as well that's online. Thank you for joining us. It's been really neat to see the numbers. I think in my head it's an average of around 100 most days, which is really exciting. That's a lot of people to be gathered together, seeking God and expecting something. You know, that's the whole point. We're here not because we want to be out of bed this early in the cold and it's snowing. No, we're here because we expect something. And God is more than able to deliver. So it's a real privilege to, to really to join and. I know for me personally, I find it very encouraging to get together as a body of believers. There's just something about people with the same spirit, with the same desires. And yeah, we all got our stuff, but you know what? Put the stuff aside. We're here for one purpose here, to glorify God and to allow God to work in our lives and the lives of our church. So this is really a good time to be together. So again, thank you for joining us. If you're online just uh, and you have your cameras on, again, just be aware of what your background is and your surroundings because uh, they will be seen, especially when we do the sharing time and you're posted here. When, if you ever come here when it's live, you're up on the two big screens as well. So you're very big, your background. So you want to make sure you know what's going on. All right. I think that's all I need as far as the kind of the housekeeping items. So let's begin in prayer. Father, Lord God, we just didn't Invite your presence here this morning. We thank you that you are a holy God. We know that you are a God who knows all things. You know what's on the deepest parts of our hearts when we came this morning. Whether we're at home watching or whether we're here, Lord God, you know. And so, Father, we pray that you would just put your light on those things today. That you would do what only you can do. Whether that's healing or whether it's restoration. Whether it's just... Uh, encouragement lord i pray that you would do for your children lord what you desire we thank you that you um, are worthy of all of our praise and we ask now that you would just lead us as we dive into your word lord god amen so uh, I've been, uh, as growing up as a kid, this will give my age a bit, a bit away here, but I was always fascinated by Star Trek, okay? I love that show. I would watch it all the time. I got a woo up back there. And, you know, I would watch all the reruns. I knew every episode. It was in my head. Because I, and, and just even the beginning, I'd watch it every time because when they'd say, they boldly go where no man has gone before. And they're out in the, you know, brinks of the universe here. And they're on the edge and they're discovering things, right? All these different life forms. Well, as much as that was just a TV show and as much as all, you know, science fiction, people have been searching deep into the universe for many, many years, looking to see if there is something out there. And I, I'm, I'm seriously, like they've been doing this for many years. In fact, almost 60 years ago in 1963, they built this place called the Air Ciabo. It's an observatory in Puerto Rico at a cost of $9.3 million back then. So you can imagine, that's a lot of investment. And I looked at a few pictures online, and it's like these you know, great big dishes and stuff pointed up into the heavens there. And what were they doing? What was their purpose? They wanted to see as far as they could push out and listen out of our space and into the universe to see if there was something out there. It, was there someone giving us a message? Was there, was there like something that was trying to speak to us? And if, and if there is, that's great. Well, then what was the message? Wow. That's a pretty serious investment. And you know what? Spoiler alert. Could have just bought them a Bible and said, here, look at it. We've already got the message. <laughs> In fact, the message came 
almost 2,000 years ago, right? And it's pretty powerful when you think about it. We've got that message. We know that message. In fact, we have it in God's word today. So the message that we're going to talk about today comes from a prayer that Jesus prayed. And yesterday, Pastor Jonathan set us up there as he started the chapter, and it'll be uh, turning to John chapter 17. He began at verse 1, and in that section, it talks about how Jesus prayed for his disciples. And that's what we focused on yesterday. I have the last part of the chapter there where it switches now, and Jesus is praying for future believers. I think it's pretty cool that Jesus would start praying for the message that was going to be spoken by the disciples for those in the future that would hear it, knowing that it would be recorded in God's word, knowing that all these years later we'd be reading this word and that we are those believers. And if you look around, this message is for us here today and you online. This is for people millions around the world today that are followers of Jesus Christ. That's pretty powerful. So what is this message that he had? What is this message that came from the creator of the universe? So if you want to turn with me, please, to John chapter 17, and it should be on the screen soon. There it is. Thank you. And we're going to begin reading at verse 20. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me be in them. I myself in them. God the Father and God the Son. Son, we we refer to that as the Trinity and the Holy Spirit. We first of that love, that knowing that He desires us to be within Him, and that we can experience that. You know, we don't need all this costly technology and satellites and all these dishes and stuff to hear that message. God actually gives us that message, and not only that, He desires for us to experience that message in our lives. So that we, in turn, can reflect it to others. And that's a very important thing. Why God wants us to experience that. Why Christ wants us to experience his glory. I'm going to come back to that in a few minutes. There's a few points that I want to ponder from us today from, from this text. Because I know it kind of goes back and forth. And it's, it's a bit wordy with, I'm in you, you're the me. You're, and you're kind of after a while. It's a little hard to track. But... There's some key things there to notice. Not only was this message hand delivered by Jesus himself. Think of the cost that it cost him for us to be able to experience that. It wasn't just something he told us. He died for us so that we could experience his glory. And I just want you to take a few minutes this morning in your quiet time just to reflect on that. Of the cost that Jesus did for us. It says very clearly in the New Testament that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And I know in my head, I always think, you know, I got to get everything together. I got to get my act together. I got to, you know, straighten up and then God can love me. Then he can receive me. And it doesn't work that way. It's by his grace. It's by his, 
his grace, his choice. It's it's his mercy that he did before we had it all together. Because the truth is, we never really do get it all together. The other part of this message is this key thing with God's relationship with his son. And it's based on love. Love motivated Christ to die for us. So in your quiet time this morning, that's another thing just to reflect on. His unconditional love for us that drove him to the cross. It says for the joy set before him, he went to the cross. I mean, I can't even begin to think how that could be joy in any way at all. And yet for Christ, it was fulfilling the father's will for us. So what does complete unity look like for believers? And really, I think there's kind of this, this twofold things, right? It's our relationship with God, but it's also very much so in this text about our relationship with each other. So this is where I'm going to start preaching it a little bit here in the morning. I, so, but it's a big deal how we react to brothers and sisters. It's a big deal. It's not just a big deal because, yeah, it's it's nice to get along. It's a big deal because of those outside of these walls are watching us. And I'm sorry, sometimes the Christians are the most embarrassing people on this planet. Because we, we just don't know. I just, it's just, it's, it's actually very embarrassing. And I'm sure you've had in your workplace where you'll go, oh man, they're, I got to back out here because I don't want to be associated with that, even though I am a believer, but I can't be, they, they connect that with that. It's not good. And so that starts with this relationship amongst us. And that starts with looking and asking in our quiet time, okay, guys, start with me. Is there something that I need to know about? Maybe I've offended someone. Maybe I've come across too harsh. Maybe I need to say sorry. You know, and that's not easy to do. And you might just think, oh, that's just a flipping thought. It just went through. No, it may make a big difference in the other believer's heart because they're really still wounded and hurt and they had no idea that you offended that much. And that's not an easy thing to do. I know that. And I'm not saying I got it right all the time, neither. But we're on a journey together. And that's what God desires. He wants us to do better. And he wants us to be better. And he doesn't want us to be better on our own. He gives us the strength through the Holy Spirit. It's not in our own will that we can do these things. And Jesus knew that how others see us interact with believers would have a direct impact on their view of God. So... In your quiet time this morning, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal if there's anything that needs to be confessed or healed or restored. Ask God to be aware of, of, our, of our actions and the implications that they have to others. And I'm going to step it up one more notch here. So, Jody, you'll probably like this. <laughs> it's teasing. Yeah, but no, and seriously, uh, I'm thinking about this a lot when I've been praying about this morning and you know and again I don't I don't have it all together I'm not perfect but it's not about that okay as believers as we come together by Christ there are some of us in this room there's some of us that are online that are called to be leaders leaders in the church there's there's another expectation on leaders as much as there is amongst the bodies as brothers and sisters the leaders are called to something higher and I want to challenge the leaders in our church today, all leaders, myself included. Take a look at what's going on in your own heart. Sometimes we can use the justification, well, you know, everyone is imperfect and we all sin. It doesn't matter. But if there's outright sin that you know about and there's no doubt about it, it isn't right. And you know that you need to get that right. You need to get it right because you can't keep living a game being a leader in amongst the body. Because not only is it a bad reflection out there, it messes it up in here. It, it just it just messes it up. And I'm not saying, again, I'm not perfect. I'm not, I'm not saying I got the gold seal here. You, you know, I no, we're all on a journey together. And, and I'm not talking about trying to pick a certain sin and all that stuff. No, no. I mean, we all have things. But there's a difference when... You outright choose something and it's in defiance to what God and you know is what you should be doing. And you decide, eh, it doesn't apply to me. Well, maybe it does. And actually, yes, it does. It applies to each one of us. 
that's standard. So I, I know it's a bit heavy. It's this early in the morning, but honestly, I thought about it a lot and I kept praying about it. And I thought, well, Lord, if you really want me to say this, you're going to have to make my heart beat. And so it's it was beaten. So here we are. So I invite you tonight, really, when you go to your quiet time, invite the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is, a, is really a gentle spirit. It comes down like a dove. And yes, we all mess up. But it, that overflowing, the just the the way the spirit works, it'll it'll come down like rain. It'll wash us clean. And the Holy Spirit can give us what we need in the areas of love and patience and kindness and joy and peace and self-control. So in closing, I know that this message, you know, that everyone kind of wants to hear on this planet or like looking for this message. I really believe it's a personal message. And some people won't want to hear it. Do you? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for your presence here. You are the only true righteous one. You are the God who gives us the ability, Lord, to become your children, to be set apart, to be sealed, to be our identity, Lord. It's in you and you alone. It's not about our titles. It's not about who we are and our jobs. And at that core level, Lord, we want to just honor you. We want to honor you in our church and in our church family and with one another. I thank you for the body of Christ. I thank you for the leaders here. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing. And may you continue to speak to us as we gather together, Lord, um, in this quiet space, Lord. And as we come back later, would you just show us, Lord, what you're doing? I thank you, Father, that uh, it starts in my heart. It starts in our hearts here. It starts in, uh, Lord, looking inward first. And I pray that you would just, through your spirit, do what only you can do for your glory so that others would believe. That's what it's about, Father God. We just thank you that you have given us this message of hope. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So you.